Welcome back to Making It With Dee. I'm Dee and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the second or part two of my pumpkin spice season. So I'll be making, wait for it, a chocolate pumpkin loaf and you won't believe the ingredients that are in this loaf. So if you're interested in seeing how this is made Stay tuned, grab your aprons, turn on your ovens, and let's get baking. So, as it's pumpkin season, I got my lovely husband to chop the pumpkin up for me, and it's ready now to be put in the roasting tray. So, same as I did with the other one before, last week's video, if you didn't catch that, have a look, I'll leave it in the card above. So, Starting off the same way, we're just gonna roast the pumpkin to get it ready for our loaf we're gonna be making. So what I normally do is preheat my oven 200 degrees and get some salt on this pumpkin. Salt on the pumpkin. Quite a bit of salt. Okay. And some oil drizzle the oil across and it usually stays in the oven for about 40 minutes or so to get it nice and golden brown and thoroughly cooked I'll see you after that right so now that the pumpkins out of the oven I am going to prepare it um, for the cakes and to do that I have to peel it. So why do I peel it afterwards, after it's already been baked in the oven? Firstly because my husband is too lazy to peel it when it's raw. <laughs> it's a chore. Um, because it's so hard, it's tougher to, to um, peel it while it's still raw. So the idea is, look how easy the skin's coming off now. Um, so usually we roast it before peeling it because it's softer and easier to do. So what I need to do next is make this fine puree it to kind of make it fine and smooth so that it can go into the loaf. So that's the next step. And I have my handy dandy, it's a handheld blender. And I'm just gonna put it in here. Turn this into more. Exactly the consistency we need for our loaf. And it didn't even take long. Now we are going to get ready to prepare the loaf. This was the main ingredient, now let's get on to the other ones. Right, let's get baking. <laughs> I am going to start by creaming the butter and the sugar, you know how this goes. I'll start that first. And this recipe has some really interesting ingredients. You can check it out in the description box below. So while the butter and the sugar is being mixed up, I'm going to get the zest of the orange to add to the mix. Butter is in, caster sugar is next, and off we go. But we did it. I think we've got enough. The recipe calls for 10 and that's two teaspoons. I think I've got about two teaspoons here, so I'm just gonna call it two teaspoons worth. Here we go. That smells absolutely delicious. I tell you some real interesting ingredients in this recipe. It's 
for that reason that I'm sharing it with you guys. Let's give this a little bit of a mix and after this I'm going to add the egg and some golden syrup. Okay, I'm going to scrape the sides as I always do before I add the rest of the ingredients. Alright, let's get this mixing and um, while it's mixing I'm going to add the egg and the golden syrup. Give it a sweep. Mix. Right. Next is, now that I've mixed the eggs and the golden syrup into this mix here, I'm going to add the flour, but I'm going to sift the flour first before I add it. So in this bowl here, I've got self-rising flour. I also have baking soda as well as custard powder. Right? Custard powder? I don't know. This is going to make for some really interesting flavors. And then I also have cocoa which goes in as well. dry ingredients done now I need to add them in here but I'm going to be alternating between the flour a little bit of flour in stir and then I'm going to be adding some orange juice I'm telling you this is going to be an amazing recipe so I will squeeze some juice out here so that I have the juice already okay here we go let's do this a little bit of flour. Where's my pumpkin? <laughs> Let me go get the pumpkin. <laughs> little bit of an oopsie. Let's put this on one side first. The pumpkin needs to go in before the flour. So I hope that this is not going to cause too much hassle. But let's get our pumpkin in there, right? <laughs> what a silly girl I am. Okay, here we go. Some flour, some juice. Some juice. Let's do the last of the flour. It's changing color because of the cocoa, obviously. And the last of the juice. I think our cake batter is ready to go into the loaf tin right now, which is what I'm going to do. My loaf tin is ready greased. The cake batter is ready. Let's do this. Pop it in there. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. My oven is preheated at 180 degrees Celsius. And this is going to bake for about an hour. And then I'll be back. We're at the home stretch. Right now, I am preparing the topping for this loaf. According to the recipe, I should be adding a chocolate icing sugar over the top. But I'm not really a fan of icing sugar. 
and I won't tell you why in this video. <laughs> it might come up later. <laughs> so I'm going to be making, you guessed it, ganache. I'll make a chocolate ganache. And I'm using dark chocolate bits. I'm just eyeballing. I don't even know if I'm getting the right um, measurements here. But so uh, I've heated the cream and I'm just going to be adding the cream to it. And I'm using dark chocolate bits. I'm just eyeballing. I don't even know if I'm getting the right um, measurements here. But so uh, I've heated the cream and I'm just going to be adding the cream to it. Look at that. Don't mind the deep dongers. It's pretty good. It just makes it look more authentically homemade, right? <clears throat> Our topping. I made a lovely chocolate ganache using dark chocolate bits and cream. And it's just about the right consistency now to be poured all over this beautiful loaf. So I'm going to do that. Here we go. And then, just for funsies, I have a little bit of a caramel. Um, it's a spread. And I've just heated a little bit. I'm gonna drizzle some caramel droppings on here too. Haha. Uh -huh. You didn't see that one coming, but here we go. Let's not overdo it. Let's not go crazy. Let's get ready for the taste test. Now it's time for the taste test. I'm a little bit loath to cut into this beautiful creation, but I'm really quite excited to see what this tastes like. So here we go. Ah, do I do it in the middle? Do I do it on the side? We'll just give a side piece. As always, the chocolate ganache is always a nice addition. Let's do this. Why am I surprised? I didn't think there was enough orange zest to actually add so much to the flavor, but it does. It's like, I don't know if you guys have this in any other part of the world than New Zealand. What do they call those chocolate orange chaffers? It's a chocolate lolly with orange filling in the side, on the inside. And that's what this tastes like. <laughs> because of the cocoa, the chocolate flavor, and then there's the orange zest. And you know what, surprisingly, I can hardly taste the pumpkin. Am I disappointed? Not really. Um, the pumpkin must be contributing somehow to the flavors in here. The ganache is a little bit overpowering. Maybe I shouldn't have put so much on it. So it's the dark chocolate, but mm, it's good. It's really good. So I would say, all in all, this one was a success without even trying too hard. <laughs> if you've come to this end of the video, you must have enjoyed the content. How about giving us a like 
and subscribe to my channel. Also, feel free to share the video to your friends and get them all to subscribe and really help my channel along. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out here with me on Making It With D, and I'll see you in my next video for part three of our pumpkin spice season. Bye.